you are welcome back to Demodism and AOG Invictus. Demodism. We are building on the super battleship uh, or the superior battleship. This is not the super battleship. It's only 2 million. I think it's a regular battleship, but that's just my scale. If you want my scale, join the army of Demodism. Uh, by self-assigning yourself Matru's third class in our Discord, and you can see my pinned message there with my uh, classes. And I probably will add some type of approximate cost-ish thing to them, or size or something like that later on. In any case, um, here we have the last iteration of the ship, and this time we are actually going to build on the superstructure. So, here we already have the next iteration of the ship, and we can't really see it, but we're going to go through this little model and see if we find anything new. But about that, I also want to give a huge thanks to the commissioned officers in the army of Jimodism who are supporting the channel very much on Patreon, and it helps very much. So a huge thanks to our Admiral Super Dave, Captain Y, Lieutenant Asteria, C2, Part by Greed, Tyler Russ, and Vincent Veritas. It helps a lot. Oh, and we also have, of course, our Stellar Gymodist C2 and our Venerated Gymodist Powered by Greed. So that's super cool. You are also YouTube members and you can support me on YouTube membership and Patreon as well. In any case, I hope you've, I hope you've seen the last episode, the last episode, the finals of the Slabman Challenge because uh, it was quite epic and we dealt out some cool uh, rewards in the Discord. You should probably join the Discord, by the way. And uh, you should definitely check that video out because uh, Kevin, with, with a one instead of an I, um, made a very cool blueprint of the Stritzjacht made by uh, Setup, a blueprint desk mat we've made out of this. So do check that out and uh, see what he created. It's a wireframe thing. It's, it, I, it actually really looks really amazing. I couldn't do that myself. So thanks a lot for um, thanks a lot to Kevin for helping with it, with it. So, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to keep track, of course, uh, what changed. Oh, look here. Um, I forgot to do like this. Repair all, because I retrofitted this. But, um, isn't that quite amazing? So here we have the start of the superstructure. And as you've seen from earlier models and earlier, uh, like, drawings, actually, uh, like actual drawings, you saw that in episode 1 uh, and 2, you can see that we're gonna have a pretty big superstructure. Um, and this is the base or the uh, ground level of this superstructure. Right here, we basically have a thin layer of metal. Uh, we won't really have anything important behind the superstructure. It's mainly there to look cool, so yes, it will be a complete waste of material and it will inhibit my chances of making a ship that's really good um, combat-wise. But I'm also thinking that any, th any shot that's aimed against the superstructure is a wasted shot, uh, so it may fill some, fill some type of function there. And in the superstructure, this is going to be right sider, so we don't need to have cram cannons on both sides, but this is of course the... Uh, the cast bronze um, goblin inspired cram turret, you know, my ancient goblin turret. Uh, but a new model, the cast bronze thing, lead millimeters, very funny. And it's just aiming out of the side here and the other side is gonna be open and this is also gonna be some type of entrance thing. Right, here we also have some space for auxiliary detection. Uh, so nothing fancy, just some holes there so we can have some extra detection because of course, we want to make sure that we don't lose all our detection and we don't need it for this side for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, here we have the cram mortars. Uh, them looking really cool. Um, we got the decorations. Really thin deck armor here, so that's probably somewhere an enemy could aim to deal some damage. It's like... Is it like one layer of wood? Why is it two layers of wood here? Oh, because I have an... Yes, this is a really cool thing if you want to make things that look cool. And that's have like small elevation differences on surfaces. I, I, I find that helps very much. We have the laser output here. So, of course, we have one laser here. And we have one laser here. Uh, we've also 
connected up a LAM system onto the superstructure. So right now this is a only 120 millimeter uh, meter range engaging uh, LAM system. We have three nodes here and five nodes here. And we are of course having the nodes there and in front, but we're not gonna go overboard with the amount of nodes because our laser, remember, it's connected up to the same system. The lamps and the damage lasers are connected up to the same system. Some of it is spread out here. We have some extra ones there, a Q1 laser, and we have the main Q0 laser down here. Now we've got the output going out to the side, deal some damage, and we have some auxiliary cram cannons right here, mainly to look cool. I don't think they'll get through to the Ragnarok at all, actually. Here, or many other ships for that matter. And we got another cram, this is a little bit more meaty, I believe in that a lot more. We have a diff gun stuck in here, so it just looks like this is kind of a, I don't know, an entrance thing, and we just rolled out a cram, no, a, a diff gun, a little a APS manual loaded gun there. Right, and the tall pipe organs are going there. So I don't know, um, that's, that's like where we're at. We have most of the weapon systems already placed down. Um, I'm starting to think, as said, that I may need to change some of the hole point crams to pen depth frag, because that uh, makes a little bit more sense. Uh, but we'll see about that a little bit later. And of course, we have some pretty nice shapes going on here. But uh, we're going to build on the superstructure, so let's load in the next iteration. I never actually did this version uh, like this way before, but this is so cool. We can see we're slowly like repairing up so we get the, the new blocks. And we can just do like this. And ta-da! You know the Vigoletta Marksman 5 firing the 67mm shell that we actually made into a water bottle, which you can be checked out into the store. I need to get my uh, updated version. It looks very funny. I just thought it was such a stupid idea, so I'm sticking with it. 67mm is a hallmark of the Army of Jumadism now. <laughs> and the Vigoletta Marksman 5 uh, happens to be an extremely efficient turret. And I, I don't know, I think you've seen this before, I don't know why exactly, but um, I don't think Sabo Frag should be a good shell, because a Sabo head decreases the damage with like quite a bit. Um, the payload is down to like 25%, so it should really be pretty bad. But I did test side by side with uh, regular Sabo, um, armor piercing and heavy heads. And the AP frag variant did actually shoot through armor faster than the other ones. So, yeah, there we have it. Uh, I wanted one of these turrets here because it's a really good turret to use to basically blast off important uh, things on, on people's superstructures. They also, this shell is also equipped with a tracer, as you may have seen, which means that it's pretty accurate. Here we can see the powerful broadside. Bam! Pretty nice, ain't that? So there we got that one. I really wanted this one and of course it's not super well protected but the uh, turret itself has some, uh, well, on turret, on turret heavy armor. So yeah. Uh, then I also added some extra cram cannons. I'm not sure we're gonna stick with these because I think, again, a lot of the smaller crams won't actually get through to the enemy. Uh, l loads of people have really good lamps and uh, sieve systems and these small cramps are probably just not worth it but they if the people if the enemies didn't invest in a sieve system too much which you should not over invest in by the way you should invest in dealing damage uh, but if they didn't do that of course they'll help so yeah by the way I just love this shield ain't it very cool like the video if you agree um, if you disagree, you'll unfortunately have to dislike the video, but it's important you press one of the buttons. Thank you. In any case, uh, that's like the extent of that, so we're all gonna move on to the next iteration. Yeah. <laughs> one thing that I just realized is that I placed down my integrated, uh, insulated shields 
smoke dispensers, uh, munition warners, and uh, laser detectors things uh, into the hull here. And this is gonna make it a lot harder if I decide to update the armor. So I guess we'll, it will take a while before we actually update the armor. Excuse me, but what? Oh, never mind. Let's move on. Next iteration. But um, we've started to build the frame on this thing. So you can see I decided to go with some super cool black outlines, some more cast iron structural things, and trying to do some really cool shapes with overlaying some decoration blocks or normal blocks to get edges we couldn't otherwise. Something I newly learned to do and using all the time now. And you can see I'm really going for this kind of cast iron, um, like 1800s industrial revolution type of industrial frames, somewhat like that. And I really like it. I just love this um, shaping and look of, of things. I just love this black iron, like uh, linseed oil um, finished iron. So uh, we have the frame here. You can see it's super weird. Uh, we're gonna make this superstructure like actually go out over the turrets. So we're, we're trying to make some kind of support structure for it. Because as said, this superstructure is gonna be pretty pretty big. So yeah, that's, that's like what we did there. Um, I think that works pretty well. And I don't remember if this rudder is newly added, but I added that as well. We're keeping the cast iron feeling to the bottom. And we also have the connecting frameworks of iron going on here. And I do actually believe that this iron network is connected up to surge protectors to have some kind of EMP protection. So they just can't go anywhere. And of course, that. That we already looked at. But yeah, that's, that's what we've done so far. And are you ready? <laughs> I think you are. Okay, BAM! Isn't that amazing? Look at that. I know I teased, I teased like this picture to uh, the, the patrons and the YouTube members a little bit before, but now you all can see it. Wow. So, um, I don't know if you think wow, but I do. I'm really happy with this superstructure because you might remember the name of, uh, of the ship is gonna be uh, Gimle. Let's dive into, into the story of, of what Gimli is again. It is a golden hall where uh, the righteous uh, uh, people will survive the Ragnarok, okay? So uh, it's apparently a golden and gemstone roofed hall. And I think this is a good beginning of a great feast hall because that's exactly what it's going to be. Um, the thought behind the Gimle is that this ship is so great and so strong that um, we can afford to have a really big deck of uh, um, feasting soldiers in the army of Jimedism and officers that just sit as this, uh, at this extremely long table with my newly designed chandeliers. Because of course we want to have chandeliers, don't we? Yes, we do. And they're just sitting at this really great table, having this amazing feast while the Gimle wins every battle. Especially the Ragnarok, so it, you know, will um, survive the Ragnarok. Since, you know, that's the purpose of this golden hall. Uh, so they're just sitting here and feasting, the Gimli is doing, the, doing and winning the battle, and um, well, that, that's, that's the, the idea behind the ship. I'm gonna fix some gemstones in the roof too, see how I can design that, but it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, yeah, we have windows going on here. I decided again to use all golden materials will be alloy to kind of get a nice difference. and. If you like the chandeliers, remember to like the video. And if you really like the chandeliers, you have to subscribe. And if you really, really, really like the chandeliers, if you become a commissioned officer in the army of Jimedism, you'll get access to the prefab. <laughs> in any case, um, we have the golden shields here on the sides that look, they're looking pretty cool, don't they? 
They're of course completely useless, but they look nice. And we're, we're really going for this cast iron industrial frame all the way, uh, unless where we have the golden, the gilded support struts. Right, so of course um, we'll be able to access the area from here in this part of the superstructure. We have a little staircase and it's going up to this hall. I don't know what I'm going to do with this hall. It's right now it's just a transit hall. Gonna have some basic detection in here just because it's unlikely to get shot. Um, we're going up here and yeah, there we are. So. I think I didn't add anything. I think I think that's that's what we've been doing, like building on the superstructure. So let me load in the next iteration because yes, there is more, and it's a bit more expensive. But now, but we added some cool stuff, like one of my favorite details. You see this? This is an actual ammo barrel, but I made it look like kind of a cram, cram cartridge or something like that. Yeah, so I think that's pretty funny. Uh, it's it's like a round of big gun and it's an actual ammo barrel this will blow up but uh, it 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 looks cool i like that prefab so in any case um, i built a cram uh, artillery piece uh, for ashes of the empire we're going to use sometime uh, if you've seen that you've seen it in stream on twitch so sub uh, sub there yes that would be nice but follow there is uh, is probably what you want to do. So in any case, uh, what has been going on here? Well, we've been developing some details. We have some diff guns going on there, if I didn't show that last time. Like, honestly, I wonder why I, like... This is such a small difference from the last one. In any case, we started to add some cannons here. I think we should have some Age of Sail cannons to just have the right feeling. I have a couple of them there too. And yeah. Let's move on to the next iteration. Uh, by the way, we found a, a, a place to pur, put some uh, uh, decoys. So here we have a little radar decoy uh, that we can kind of revert some missiles because if they're aiming here, and if the if the if if like the missile doesn't have um, what is it uh, APN or prediction guidance, it will go straight towards the ship like this, and it will like. Eh, try to turn when it comes close and then it's gonna ugh, miss very nice the next iteration and we're missing a big chunk here why are we missing a big chunk here well that you will see in uh, tada we have smokestacks isn't that quite amazing uh, so we added these smokestacks here just for like aesthetical reasons of course they're producing smoke and we get that broadside look and that's uh, known as the big boy when I was building it like last year you probably seen some videos about it if you stay tuned for a long time and if you did thanks a lot for being with me so long and hope you enjoy it so these are some smokestacks we have some uh, ventilation and fire extinguishers and stuff that we can deal with them if they cause any trouble but other than that they're just really cool looking smokestacks that uh, is of course putting up all the cold smoke from the uh, uh, the steam engines somehow. Yeah, it's magic. But in any case, uh, we can see that the superstructure has grown quite a bit. Um, that's probably the main thing we should be looking at, not the smokestacks. Look at this. Here we have the captain's uh, steering hut thing. And you may think that this is a really bad place to sit because you're absolutely not very well protected. And you are right. So you should probably have a captain here. And since we only have one captain right now in the army of Jimmyism, I'm afraid that's you, Captain Y. You're gonna sit up here. Um, congratulations, uh, you are being tasked with a very important and honorable mission. However, we are gonna invest in good, decent lamps and okay uh, anti-missile systems and uh, um, some civs cannon, hopefully. Yes, indeed. You don't need to worry at all, Captain Y. You're very welcome. Uh, be honored in this seat. And, uh, I don't know, Admiral Super Dave, I, I recommend you kind of hide down here somewhere. Probably a good idea. In any case, so that's that's like where the captain sits, very beautiful. And um, we have some control pads because I thought that maybe if we want to turn off like the smoke and we just want to make it not lag at all, 
uh, I imagined we could also put a switch that turns off uh, all the lights. Because I have some cool lights here, we can see there, and of course the chandeliers, they have light as well. And I've uh, understood that light causes some lag, so that's why I want to have a global on and off switch for all lights and all smoke to kind of boost some FPS. Yeah, a lot has happened in this situation. So let's, uh, where, where to even begin? Right, so here we have some cool decorations. This is of course where you would board the ship. We have some rubber pads there so that you don't, you know, accidentally damaged the dock. So you can just walk on top here. You can kind of uh, tie up the uh, the land, land gang or whatever it's called. Um, we have a little anchor too, really small one, but probably just to anchor some basic things. And you can walk in here and get access to the ship. So we're, we're, we're of course gonna have some type of walkway. We're not gonna have full interiors, but we are going to have interiors. Some basic ones so that you can access it at least. Right, um, we got them there and we have actually exchanged uh, some turrets here. I thought that the cram turrets in here was kind of a little bit wasted. So I updated them to the uh, 8 meter tight Tetris uh, Vigoletta sniper cannons instead. And this is a pretty good sniper cannon. It is a Sabo sniper only, Sabo head, um, dealing some penetrative damage. And I wanted this to not only deal sandblasting damage to superstructures and potential enemy turrets, but to also be able to help in shooting off barrels, penetrating uh, turret uh, head armor and stuff like that. So yeah, then of course we have some additional things up here. I made it accessible using ladders not the most glamorous, but it works. And then up here we have a new pack turret. This is the tri-pack turret, which was spawned beside the ship before, and I finally found a place for it. This is, if you remember, a pack, piercing and EMP uh, turret, and I think I removed the synchronization. So they shoot all at once. No, they are not. God damn it. They are, they are going to shoot all at once. <clears throat> And hopefully they'll hit in approximately the same spot, which would be nice. We also got some surface E right here. It's actually mostly for the looks, but also to uh, not make one armor piercing HG shell kill us if it hits right. Yeah, which uh, I should cover the entire area with the era, but it doesn't look cool. And I realized that my objective was to make a ship that really good and works re really well. But I'm starting to build a ship that just looks really cool. And I just have to pray that it actually works and it's actually efficient too. Here we have my uh, um, anti, anti cram cannons. This is flak. These are flak cannons that shoot flak shells to the enemy. Yeah. I think so, or this is maybe damn no, 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 this is flag cannons. We have a little detection turret here. This is completely EMP insulated. Um, so if anyone, like it, you'll, you'll have to shoot really well to get rid of it. EMP won't help you here, it's, it's pretty insulated. And it has some basic nice detection. We have a 90 degree radar, laser tracker, camera, camera tracker, two camera trackers. It has a lot of detection, I don't know, it has too much. But yeah, and up top, uh, we also have more decoys. We have some cool uh, wires that are connecting the superstructure to the main area. And I wanted this just to look cool. I realize I haven't been very good at using these imaginary wires before, but they just, they just look so darn cool. I just have to learn to start using them. And this is uh, one of my first examples of doing that. Right, and up top here we have the idea that uh, Azusa suggested in our Discord and that was that we should have some kind of teasing system. So this is a laser targeter, it will target another part than the laser is targeting just to tease the smoke to uh, dispense there too. Because if we dispense the smoke at all the places at once, the enemy's eventual lamp systems will also be 
um, handicapped. And if it doesn't get handicapped, uh, well, then at least we are making the enemy use more materials than they would have done otherwise. So we're gonna switch up this teaser to a uh, system that teases fast. And of course, it's made to tease the lambs. So this is just a thumper head. Um, it's a kinetic missile just so that it doesn't get shot down by the enemy's uh, munitions, anti-munition systems too fast. All right, this is the next iteration of the ship. This is the 28th uh, iteration that I've saved. And here we can see I added this super cool pattern on the shields. Doesn't this look super cool? So I added new colors. Instead of using the gold, I started to use a brass. And I made a bronze and a uh, uh, like silvery aluminium surface type look here, so that we can really have these shields that really looks up like some kind of uh, weapon shields. If you're a commissioned officer, uh, you may choose one of these shields as uh, your own specific hallmark. Uh, describe them in the comments which one is yours. <laughs> In any case, uh, that's what I added there. I think that looks super cool. Um, we have, again, as I said, I wanted to have some basic detection in here. <clears throat> so we have some EMP insulated um, detection here that goes all the way around. Very handy. This episode, we have really been focusing on the superstructure. A lot inside the ship hasn't, of course, happened. It hasn't happened much here. Some minor armor upgrades to internal armor. But, but nothing hardcore, just some basic connection struts here and there and... Oh, look, by the way, uh, sorry, I just realized that I need to... Uh, will need to do like this! Ta-da! Repair all. Alright, so um, we have, we have some, some small changes in here, yeah? As I said, internal armor upgrades. So, uh, because these, tur these engines were a little bit too exposed before, I added some basic internal armor. Just some slopes, slo beam slopes, with some alloy and wood backing them up. Basic splitter protection, basically. But um, I think it's gonna help a lot, uh, or actually I know it helps a lot, because um, we had an incident before where the crossbones, of all things, uh, shredded some internal engines uh, during some basic testing and that wasn't really fun so I thought that god damn it I have to have some internal protection against frags so there we have that and of course um, we are also looking at a nice walkway system inside of here so you can see how it's all accessible like this and yeah, I, th I think that's like the extent of the internal upgrades as for right now. Other than that, we have just focused on making this thing beautiful. And why I didn't show you this last iteration, this has been fixed. We added an anchor here. I thought that this isn't, of course, an entryway. This is actually the uh, exit hole where they cast out the anchor, the proper anchor. So it sits there. We have some rubber padding so it doesn't damage the side and railings and stuff like that. So I kind of imagine that the anchor chain is inside of there and they just put it out of there and they also have a little cannon that they can take out. So yeah, that is the gimlet so far. We've been using some more um, wires to connect things up, make it look a little bit more sturdy. And that's the extent of it for this episode. You may have, uh, however, have noticed that in this uh, version, we're actually over budget. We are 2.227 million. That's too much. We're gonna make this go under 2.2 million. It's gonna be 2.1 whatever, but not 2.2. So that's a thing we'll have to fix later um, in the next episode to be specific. So keep tuned for that. I hope you really enjoyed this little video and if you did, Again, please leave a like, join our Discord, self-assigned Matrus 3rd class to get into the army of Jimmerism. And if you even want to support me a lot, a lot, a lot, you can consider becoming a uh, supporter on Patreon as a commissioned officer or as a uh, 
member of the Gymodist Ecclesiarchy as a YouTube member. Check that out if you want to, otherwise I'll see you next video. This is your host, Gymodism, and we are signing out.